السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحدہ لا شریک لہ واشہد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Today we heard some words of the historic pledge that we all took with Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasir Al-Aziz precisely a year ago at the National Ijtema of Majlis Khudam Al-Ahmadiyya UK and some of those words were I shall give every possible sacrifice no matter how heavy its burden in order for the blessed flag of Islam to be raised aloft in every nation until the end of time. This was a pledge, this was a promise we all made, repeating the words after Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih. At around the same time in October of last year, Huzuri Anwar approved the theme for Majlis Khudam al USA to be fulfilling our pledges. In the Holy Quran, Allah Almighty refers to the people of Israel, the Bani Israel, that you fulfill your pledges. First Allah says, O children of Israel, remember my favor which I bestowed upon you and fulfill your covenant with me I will fulfill my covenant with you and me alone should you fear. So this is a deal, an agreement we have with Allah Almighty. Something that's etched in the Holy Quran, a contract between us and Allah in which he says, you fulfill your responsibilities and your covenant and I promise you that I'll fulfill my responsibility and my covenant as well. But first Allah tells us to remember His favors upon us. This deal started off with Allah showering some favors on us that we are not deserving of. Favors on our parents and our forefathers that we have no idea about. And then He says, you made some covenants to me, you fulfill yours. And when you do that, you'll enjoy countless of my blessings that will come to you. In this same regard, Huzur Anwar, in that same uh, ishtima that he made, that pledge, repeated these words as reminders that having made this pledge, you must strive to live up to it. Because it's a pledge that we made with Allah Ta'ala. You should regularly read its words so you're always aware of your responsibilities. Reflect seriously upon it and pay heed to your obligations, to your faith, knowing that you cannot rest easy until that day when the true and peaceful teachings of Islam have reached each village, each town, city and nation of the world and its truth is accepted by the vast majority of people worldwide." End quote. Now this may sound as a huge promise that we made we may be sitting here individually thinking, how can I do this? How can I fulfill this pledge of making the flag of Islam Ahmadiyya rise above all flags? How can I as an individual fulfill this responsibility of making sure that the message of Islam Ahmadiyya reaches the corners of the world? Maybe you may be concerned. Some people say when I travel and I meet people say, I understand that this, this, this responsibility is being pushed. I understand that it's extremely important, but I just don't have what it takes. I don't even know how to start. Because there's a lot of pressure from my family about my school and my grades. They want me to get straight A's. They want me to become a professional. I have to keep studying. 
And I have this huge responsibility on my shoulders. I don't know how to balance my time. I don't know how to serve the Jamaat. I don't know how to have that fire in my belly to live up to these words that I've just said with Khalifatul Masih. As Ahmadi Muslims, we must strive to the best and not settle for anything less. That's our responsibility. In our careers, in our studies, we should strive for the best, absolutely. But sometimes we must also ask ourselves, at what cost? Sacrifices have to be made. But what are you ready to sacrifice? when you're pursuing that great career that you're thinking of. Do not let it be your faith that has to be sacrificed. And your drive must never be for money. It's easy to think of those big careers and the paycheck that it comes with. It's easy to think of the comfort and the houses and the cars to motivate our children to become the greatest in their fields of study. But that's not the covenant we made. As Ahmadi Muslims, it should be about the spirit of service. That's what should drive us. And Hazul warns in that same speech that the biggest obstacle blocking the path to victory of any nation or community is if its members gain a lust for money and wealth. Such material cravings can easily corrupt people and weaken their resolve to offer sacrifices for their faith and to fulfill their religious objectives. So it's fine, it's great to pursue and become the best in your field. But if your motivation is money and comfort, then you would not be fulfilling this pledge. Our pledge is to serve our country and our nation. Also as young people living in this country, we're faced with many trials. An example is that of a khadim who I met. He told me about some struggles that he faced when he was going to college. That some of his friends in his dorm wanted him to be involved in certain actions. A group would come into his room and they would party late into the night. And he said, I was struggling. I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't want to be a part of it. There was a girl that they kept pushing at me. Sometimes I would come late in the night and she'd be laying down in my bed, inviting me. It was tough. I would go into the library and I would read until I'm sure that they've all gone to sleep now. Maybe 2, 3 a.m. in the morning and then I'll go to my room. But he had to deal with this for years. So I understand if that's your struggle. If you're under pressure. I understand if your education standard is not up to what maybe your parents want. Sometimes they want you to get all these straight A's and get into the Ivy League schools. You get rejected rishta after rishta because you don't have enough money in your account or because you're not educated enough. I understand when you go to college and at work, the girls and the ladies that are working with you don't care about how much is in your account. Sometimes they're coming after you. But your parents don't listen to you, it seems. Or the girl who you want to talk to, maybe you think just cares about your paycheck. But you're under pressure to keep saying no to all those girls in college and at your work. It's extremely difficult. I understand some of the young ones may be under pressure because a friend is a he and now decides to be a she. They understand that Islam, what Islam teaches, but they just don't want to upset their friend. And they'll call that person she. I understand when you're 12, 13, and you disagree with homosexual tendencies, but because you don't want to be called a bigot, a homophobic, you just go along with the crowd because you don't want to be bullied. But all these are genuine, yes but they are testing our identity and it makes it extremely difficult. The chance that we all have is to remain in a group like this, to be around brothers as we are around today, to be in the company of the righteous. Not to say that you are not righteous and everyone else is. What it means is 
you share whatever righteousness you have and you learn from the others whatever righteousness you have and we all pray that Allah covers our weaknesses I know of a khadim who had aspirations and desires to become a doctor he went to college before he went we had a conversation series of conversations about some of the challenges he would face he went and the first few days first few weeks his friends were involved in partying and different substances he got caught in it and he made a mistake something was laced in whatever he drank whatever he smoked and he lost his mind completely his dream of becoming a doctor was shattered because he took the wrong substance just one night he had to come back home and now he's in the mental health facility because he made that one wrong turn so it can get extremely difficult the chance we have is to remain in that group of people who are striving to fulfill their pledges it just makes it easier for you to be protected when you are with the flock but when you isolate yourself it becomes extremely difficult but all these brothers especially the first one that I gave you who remain steadfast Alhamdulillah he's now happily married he's serving Jamaat and everyone knows him as a very active Khadim but because he was steadfast because he was prayerful in fulfilling our pledges I want to give another example of a Khadim who lost his child his child was barely born and he lost his child that same weekend there was Shura and he had security duty at Shura so the morning of Shura on Friday he had to go to the graveyard to bury his child and he did that with his family after the burial while his wife was still at the hospital he went straight from the graveyard to the masjid where Shura was taking place because he had promised the Nazim Amumi that he was going to offer his duties that day he went straight to the masjid and he stood in the masjid and he fulfilled his responsibilities of a khadim of offering his duties as he promised he fulfilled his pledge and then after Jummah ended he went to the hospital to be with his wife because she was still recovering these are also great examples of brothers that are around us you may not know some of the sacrifices that some of these brothers are making but when we talk to each other and we connect and we pray for each other these examples come out our identity must be clear people who made these sacrifices understand because they're, they're very strong in their identity and some of us are struggling with our identity but when we lose that we lose everything our identity has to be clear otherwise we'll be in a state of confusion your qaid your murabi your sadr cannot keep running after you every day huzur cannot keep running after you every day at some point every single one of us has to make a decision do you want to be here or not do you want to believe in ahmadiyat or not do you want to follow khilafat or not it cannot be that you're trying to run one way and someone has to keep chasing you over and over again that person will get tired and you'll get tired too and sometimes it's too late so if even the younger ones and the older ones it's never too late to turn around but you have to give yourself that opportunity you have to give yourself that chance so that Allah when you come to him walking he comes to you running but of course all of this is not to say that we just have to stay away from vices and we'll be fine all of this is not to say that we just protect ourselves from sin that's the bare minimum there is a criteria there is a standard as Ahmadi Muslims that we must strive to be not just to keep our necks above water and that brings me to the very beautiful message that Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih sent to us for this National Ishtima of Majlis Khutam al Ahmadiyya UK that I want to read to all of you so we understand what the expectation of Khalifa al-Masih is not to be at the lowest standards but to fly high in the spiritual realms Hazur says 
Dear members of Majlis Khudamul Ahmadiyya USA Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu I pray this message finds you in good health and high spirits as you gather for your annual national ijtima. I have chosen the essential topic of strengthening one's faith and paying heed to the worship of Allah to address you. I want us all to imagine that we are sitting in the office of Khalifatul Masih, sitting in mulaqat, and he's talking to you directly, one to one. Huzur says, it is a clarion call to reevaluate your spiritual priorities and rededicate yourselves to the worship of Allah the Almighty. In today's world, distractions abound. Material pursuits, the allure of instant gratification, and the relentless bombardment of misleading information constantly vie for our attention, often pulling us away from our true purpose, which is recognizing and worshiping Allah the Almighty. Yet, it is in this very recognition and worship that we find true peace, lasting fulfillment, and the strength to navigate the complexities of life. The cornerstone of our faith, the foundation upon which our spiritual edifice is built, is Salat. The five daily prayers are not mere rituals to be performed out of habit or obligation, but rather a, lifetime, a lifeline, a direct channel of communication with Allah. It is through Salat that you can nourish your souls Seek his guidance, express your gratitude, and find solace in his presence. However, it is not enough to simply offer salat mechanically. Strive for a state of khushu, a state of deep humility and concentration where your heart is fully engaged in communion with Allah. Reflect upon, your meaning, upon the meaning of the words you utter, allowing them to penetrate the depths of your heart and soul. Experience the, transform the transformative power of congregational prayer where unity amplifies the impact of your supplications and strengthens the bonds of brotherhood. Complement your obligatory prayers with the beauty of the tahajjud prayer offered in the stillness of the night. This intimate con conversation with Allah when distractions fade and the world sleeps allows for a profound connection, a pouring out of your heart, and a chance to experience His boundless, boundless love and mercy in a uniquely personal way. Further, strengthen your faith through deep immersion in the study of the Holy Quran. Make its study a daily practice, pondering over its profound wisdom and allowing its timeless teachings to guide your thoughts actions and interactions with others. The Holy Quran is a treasure trove of spiritual insights, moral guidance, and illuminating examples of those who walk the path of righteousness. Yet remember, strengthening one's faith is not a passive process. It demands continuous effort, introspection, and a willingness to confront your weaknesses. Seek out opportunities to increase your religious knowledge through study circles, discussions with learned scholars, and engaging with the rich literature of the Jamaat. As members of this blessed Jamaat and Majlis Khuddam al you are the inheritors of a rich legacy of devotion and sacrifice. Let the examples of your predecessors who place their faith above all worldly concerns inspire you to strive for ever greater heights of spirituality and morality. May this ijtama serve as a catalyst for your spiritual growth, igniting within you a renewed passion for the worship of Allah. May your faith be a beacon, illuminating the path of others and drawing them towards the recognition of our Lord and Creator. May Allah Ta'ala bless you all. May Allah Ta'ala bless you all in every way. Ameen wa salam. Yours sincerely, Mirza Masroor Ahmad, Khalifatul Masih. A Muhtasiran Huzurka, Jo Peram, 
حضور نے بھیجا ہے خاص طور پر ہمارے لیے مجلس خدام الحمدیہ یو ایس اے کے لیے اس سے پہلے میں تھوڑی باتیں اپنی اس کی طرف توجہ دلانا چاہتا ہوں اور وہ ہے ہماری ذمہ داریاں اور جو ہم نے عہد کیا ہے اس کا پورا کرنا اللہ کے فضل سے ہم میں سے کئی ایسے ہیں جو کوشش کر رہے ہیں ہم میں کئی ایسے ہیں جن کو کافی مشکلات ہیں خاص طور پر جو بچے اسکول جا رہے ہیں شادی کے معاملات میں میں نے مثال دی ہے کہ بعض دفعہ ہم میں سے جو نوجوان ہیں وہ کوشش کرتے ہیں کہ ان کی شادی ہو جائے ان کا رشتہ ہو جائے ایک طرف ماں باپ کہتے ہیں کہ کچھ تو بنو کچھ پڑھائی کرو کچھ پیسے بناؤ تم سے کون شادی کرے گا نکمے ہو ہماری لڑکیاں کافی الحمد للہ کافی پڑھی لکھی ہیں لیکن بعض لوگ کہتے ہیں کہ لڑکے تو نکمے ہیں لیکن یہ بہت مشکل ہے کیونکہ جب آپ کالج میں جاتے ہیں جو لڑکیاں بعض دفعہ آپ کے پیچھے ہوتی ہیں ان کو کوئی پرواہ نہیں ہے کہ آپ کے بینک اکاؤنٹ میں کتنے پیسے ہیں یا آپ نے کتنی پڑھائی کی ہے وہ تو بس کہتے ہیں کہ جہاں پہ بھی آپ نے جانا ہے میں جاؤں گی جو بھی تم چاہتے ہو میں کروں گی یہ بہت مشکل ہے اور بعض دفعہ سمجھانا مشکل ہوتا ہے جو ماں باپ سمجھتے ہیں کہ ہم بچے کی شادی دیر سے کریں گے اس کی وجہ سے ہمارے نوجوان بعض دفعہ ضائع ہو رہے ہیں کالج میں جو مشکلات کا سامنا کرنا پڑتا ہے وہ آسان کام نہیں تو ہمیں چاہیے کہ ان مشکلات کو سمجھیں اور ان کے لیے خاص دعا کریں لیکن ایک احمدی ہونے کا مطلب صرف یہ نہیں ہے کہ ہم گناہوں سے بچیں حضرت خلیفۃ المسیح ہمارے لیے کیا چاہتے ہیں ان کا کیا نمونہ ہے اور ان کا کیا پیغام ہے ذرا وہ سن لیں اور اللہ کرے ان شاء اللہ تعالیٰ کہ ہم سب اس کے سننے والے ہوں اور اس پل اللہ تعالیٰ ہمیں عمل کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے حضور اقدس اللہ تعالیٰ بن نصر عزیز فرماتے ہیں پیارے ممبران مجلس خدام الحمدیہ امریکہ السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ میری دعا ہے کہ یہ پیغام آپ کو اس حال میں ملے کہ آپ صحت و سلامتی کے ساتھ آمدگوں آمدگوں سے بھرپور اپنے نیشنل سالانہ اجتماع کے لیے اکٹھے ہو رہے ہیں میں نے آپ سے مخاطب ہونے کے لیے ایک نہایت ہی اہم موضوع کا انتخاب کیا ہے یعنی اپنے ایمان کو مضبوط کرنا اور عبادت الہی کی طرف توجہ دینا کیونکہ بحثیت احمدی مسلمان یہی آپ کے وجود کا خلاصہ ہے میرا یہ پیغام واضح اور کھلے طور پر بڑے درد کے ساتھ آپ کو توجہ دلاتا ہے کہ آپ اپنی روحانی ترجیحات کا اثر ناؤ جائزہ لیں اور اللہ تعالیٰ کی عبادت پر ایک بار پھر قائم ہو جائیں آج کے دور میں بے شمار دلچسپیاں ہماری توجہ کو اپنی طرف کھینچنے والی ہیں دنیاوی مال مال و دولت کی دوڑ فوری تسکین حاصل کرنے کی کشش اور شوق اور جھوٹ پر مبنی حقائق کی مسلسل بجھار ہماری توجہ حاصل کرنے کے لیے گویا ہر وقت مقابلہ کر رہے ہیں اور اکثر ہمیں ہمارے اصل مقصد یعنی اللہ تعالیٰ کی پہچان اور اس کی عبادت سے دور کر دیتے ہیں لیکن دراصل اللہ تعالیٰ کی پہچان اور اس کی عبادت میں میں ہی ہمیں یہ ہمیں حقیقی سکون دائمی تسکین اور زندگی کی الجھوں سے نمٹنے کی قوت ملتی ہے نماز ہمارے ایمان کا کلیدی پتھر ہے اور نماز ہی وہ بنیاد ہے جس پر ہماری روحانی عمارت قائم ہے پنج وقت نمازوں کی ادائیگی محض رسم یا عادت کے طور پر بجا لانے فرائض نہیں ہے بلکہ یہ ہماری زندگی کی بقا کی ضامن اور اللہ تعالیٰ سے براہ راست رابطہ رابطے کا ذریعہ ہے نماز ہی کے ذریعے آپ کی روح پرورش پاتی ہے نماز ہی کے ذریعے آپ اللہ سے رہنمائی طلب کر سکتے ہیں اس کے شکر گزار بندے بن سکتے ہیں اور اس کا قرب پا کر سکینت حاصل کر سکتے ہیں تاہم نماز کو بے سوچے سمجھے صرف مشینی انداز میں ادا کر دینا کافی نہیں ہے اپنی نمازوں میں خوشو کی حالت کو پانے کی ہر مم پانے کی ہر ممکن کوشش کریں یعنی بے حد انکسار اور پورے انہماک کی حالت 
جس میں آپ کا دل کامل طور پر اللہ سے ہم کلام ہو الفاظ کی ادائیگی کے ساتھ ساتھ ان کے معنی پر غور کرتے چلے جائیں اور انہیں اپنے دل اور روح کی گہرائیوں میں اترنے دیں با جماعت نماز کی ادائیگی کے نتیجے میں عملی طور پر موجزانہ تبدیلیوں کا مشاہدہ کریں کہ جماعت کی برکت آپ کی دعاؤں کی قبولیت کو بے انتہا بڑھاتی اور اور بھائی چارے کو فروغ دیتی ہے اپنی فرا اپنی فرض نمازوں کی تکمیل نماز تحجد کی زینت سے کریں نماز تحجد رات کی خاموشی میں ادا کی جاتی ہے جب سارا جہان غافل ہوتا ہے اور تمام شور و غل موقوف ہو جاتا ہے یہی وقت اللہ کے ساتھ ذاتی اور گہلا تعلق قائم کرنے کا کام کر قائم کرنے کا ہے جب آپ اپنے دل کی باتیں اللہ سے اللہ سے کر سکتے ہیں اور یہی موقع ہے جب اس کی بے پایاں محبت اور رحمت کی ایسی تجلی محسوس کر سکتے ہیں جو خاص آپ کے لیے ہے مزید برآں اپنے ایمان کو قرآن مجید کے گہرے مطالعے کے ذریعے قوت دیں اس کا روزانہ مطالعہ کریں اس کی پرحکمت تعلیمات پر غور کریں اور اس کی دائمی تعلیمات سے اپنے سوچ اپنے اعمال اور آپس کے باہمی تعلقات کے متعلق رہنمائی لیں قرآن مجید روحانی بصیرتوں کا ایک خزانہ ہے جو اخلاقی رہنمائی فراہم کرتا ہے اور ان لوگوں کی روشن کی روشن مثالیں پیش کرتا ہے جنہوں نے تقوا کو تقوا کی راہوں پر قائم مارا لیکن یاد رکھیں کہ ایمان کو مضبوط کرنا یوں ہی حاصل نہیں ہو جائے گا اس کا تقاضا ہے کہ آپ مسلسل جد و جہد اور محاسبہ نفس کرتے ہیں اور اپنی کمزوریوں کا سامنا کرنے کا حوصلہ پیدا کریں اپنے دینی علم میں اضافے کی کوشش کرتے رہیں اور اس کی خاطر عملی مجالس میں بیٹھیں صاحب علم لوگوں کے ساتھ گفتگو کریں اور جماعت کے قیمتی علم کلام علم کلام سے استفاضہ کریں آپ اس بابرکت جماعت اور مجلس خدام الحمدیہ کے ارکان کی حیثیت سے اخلاص و وفا اور قربانی کی عظیم و شان ورثے کے حاصل ہیں کے حامل ہیں آپ کے بزرگوں نے دین کو دنیا پر مقدم رکھنے کی جو مثالیں قائم کی ہیں وہ آپ کو اس بات کی تحریک دلائیں کہ آپ بھی اعلیٰ ترین روحانی اور اخلاقی درجات حاصل کرنے کی کوشش کرنے والے ہوں اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب پر ہم سب کو ان باتوں پر عمل کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے حضور نے آخر میں دعا کی ہے اللہ کرے کہ یہ اجتماع آپ کی روحانی ترقی کے لیے محمیز کا کام دے اور آپ کے اندر اللہ تعالیٰ کی عبادت کا ایک نیا جوش اور ولولہ پیدا کرے اللہ کرے کہ آپ کا ایمان ایک ایسی مشعل راہ بن جائے جو لوگوں کے لیے ہمارے رب اور خالق کو پہچاننا پہچاننے کا موجب ہو اللہ تعالیٰ آپ سب کو ہر ہر قسم کی برکتوں سے سے حصہ عطا کرے آمین و سلام مرزا مسرور احمد خلیفۃ المسیح الخامس واخر الدعوانا ان الحمد للہ رب العالمین and then i want to request everyone after this to attend the next activity on the agenda which is the existence project happening at the hub stage this will be led by the review of religions team and it will be introduced by sayyid amir safir sahib who has come as the representative of hazar khalifa al masih ayatollah taala bin nasir al aziz this is about our entire existence and that is the existence of allah taala and how we can strengthen and relate with the connection of Allah Ta'ala. So I hope and pray that inshallah from here, we'll all proceed after these announcements to the MKA hub stage. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, the announcement regarding the existence project has been made by respected Sadr Sahib. Uh, the only other announcement that I have is related to Salatul Tahajjad and Fajr, which is going to take place, inshallah ta'ala, in the morning. Salatul Tahajjad will take place right here in this marquee at 5 a.m. and Fajr Salat will be offered at 5.45 a.m. 
جو اگلا ایونٹ ہے اس کی بابت محترم صدر صاحب نے اناؤنسمنٹ کر دی ہے جو ریویو آف ریلیجنس کے تحت ایگزٹینس پروجیکٹ کے بارے میں ہوگا دوسری جو اناؤنسمنٹ ہے اس کا تعلق تحجد اور فجر کی سلاد کے متعلق ہے تحجد کی نماز انشاءاللہ تعالیٰ اسی مارکی میں صبح پانچ بجے ادا کی جائے گی اور فجر کی نماز جو ہے وہ پانچ پینتالیس پہ ادا کی جائے گی جزاک اللہ ناؤ آئی ریکویسٹ ایوری ون پلیز پروسیڈ ٹو دی ہب اسٹیج ویئر دا نیکسٹ ایونٹ از گوئنگ ٹو ٹیک پلیس ود رسپیکٹ آمر صفی سر